There's always a perception that black artists, black actors have this qualitatively less than appeal or qualitatively less than projection of what society deems to be uh, acceptable. The media is a powerful tool. It influences the masses. What many see on TV and film impacts how they perceive and treat other individuals. With great power comes great responsibility. What is being done to properly represent African Americans in television and film? Although there are few empowering black characters in the media, the majority of the depictions of African Americans are degrading, stereotypical, and measurably harmful to the lives of actual black individuals. Why don't you get a job and go to work? No, you lend me a job this morning. Throughout the history of television and film, there is a consistent repetition of these stereotypical tropes, subservient roles, and demeaning plots. Delaware State University students DSU faculty, and several Wesley students share their views on the portrayal of black individuals in television and film. I feel like black youth is portrayed in television as overly aggressive, they're pertaining of a street life, and that, even though that may be the reality of some, that is certainly not the case for everyone. I think that Black youth are always portrayed as thugs or um, gangsters that are always selling drugs or going to jail or dropping out of school. They never show like how intelligent black people really are or the good things that they do. Like, of course, everybody knows like the big celebrities, like Oprah, she's the richest black woman, or whatever. But the young, like the young people, they're always getting into trouble and. It just never shows like there's so many like young people doing things like a young black girl just got like 13 or 1.3 million dollars in scholarships that the movies never show that they just show everything bad about the black kids and how they have AIDS or just bad stuff. It's never like they hardly ever show anything good about how we excel and what we do. All right, so if you watch Disney, you realize that. Like the, the black character is always the one person that's always sassy and like he always has a joke and if it's if it is like a serious show it's always about um, slavery or something that's going on in the community it's, it can never be like a regular movie it's just a regular black character. i don't think they're represented as well as caucasian people um they don't have a lot of roles in big tv shows or big movies which i probably like to see more african americans have bigger roles you know big movies, but at the moment, we just don't have any. So that's my outtake on it. Well, I think it's a relative way of looking at it. In one way, uh, you can look at the way white actors and white comedians are portrayed in media and in film, and that gives you a contrast to show you that it's quite a bit different. Because I would argue that, uh, say, a comedian like uh, Jim Carrey, even though he does slapstick performances and silly things, is gauged to be much different than, say, uh, Kevin Hart. And so Jim Carrey could do slapstick and it's, in, it's ingenious, but a black person does it, and then it's portrayed or viewed in a totally different way. I would say that uh, the way black actors, uh, particularly in film, are portrayed and, and it dates back to when we saw the uh, emails of Sony being hacked last year, and the executive, white executives of Sony were uh, ridiculing black films. Uh, they were getting ready to go to the White House to meet Obama, and the joke was, oh, I bet Obama likes Kevin Hart, or I bet Obama likes 12 Years a Slave, or uh, Django. And mind you, if you look at the box office statistics of those movies that they ridiculed, all of those movies were box office successes, hundreds of millions of dollars, but they were jokingly ridiculing the films, you know, and you would have to ask yourself why. And the woman who was at the base of it, Amy, uh, Amy Pasquale, I believe her name was, you know, she even had to go to Al Sharpton and apologize and I always wondered, you know, what was she apologizing for? Because 
those movies made millions of dollars. And why would why can't Obama like Kevin Hart? Why is it an insult for Obama to like Django or Twelve Years a Slave? What is it about those movies, as I said, that even though they make money, that are qualitatively less than, say, a white movie? So it's a very relative way of looking at it, and there's a sociology behind it. I think that needs to be examined more closely than uh, we give it credit for. met up with a group of DSU students to hear their perspectives. Okay, well, I will first, especially for me being black, I think that sometimes we get the impression that we are less than or that it's harder for us to succeed, which in some cases it is, but I mean, everybody doesn't have a hard life just because they're black, so I think that sometimes that gets misportrayed in media. And yeah, I think black youth are often pigeonholed into a sort of like hip-hop type of culture in That's terms true. of media and a lot of the time they can't be like academics or like you know anything else than the particular culture. They're either like some kind of hip-hop person or they don't fit in. Well, I notice a lot of the time it's like comedic effect because yeah. they will like portray either uh, black people to be very angry or to be like or ghetto in a sense because it's supposed to be funny, it's supposed to be uh, it's not relatable at all to the to uh, what what it's uh, being shown to the audience because a lot of the media is tech, is um, controlled by older white men who uh, you know think that it's only one way and that their generalization is what's correct amongst the people and so you know it really affects how people like how black youth are looked at because it's the media is everywhere you're gonna that's the only way you're gonna get knowledge of just other people in general so. It, it has a negative portrayal in general as well. I definitely agree. And I think, in addition, there are, isn't a whole lot of portrayal as it is. That is true. In like major TV shows and movies. And like, you know, there's the whole talk about like the Oscars. There's not a lot of acclaimed roles for black people in general. So it's often the. Uh, and it's unfortunate that a lot of um, entertainment that uh, black people do get is only through like networks like BET. That's, that's the unfortunate thing, is that it should be more widely available and it shouldn't be limited to one channel only. It should be the mainstream. It sh yeah, it should For be sure. mainstream, definitely. We're only represented in subservient roles, token roles, uh, or roles that were previously taken by white actors and now blacks are uh, substituting in those roles. Like for instance, like a, a, a Nick Fury, you know, Samuel Jackson playing Nick Fury or um, what have you. Uh, we never, or we play, you know, slaves or, or, or civil rights workers. I mean, you know, like we never, we never get to be the great, great people. B is a criminal justice major with a double minor in forensic science and philosophy. She expresses herself through the art of spoken word. Here is an original piece regarding the portrayal of African Americans through the media. Trending topic. Why do we believe in such controversies with all of our being, allowing a simple tweet to reiterate and control our thinking? Hiding something from a Negro in books never to realize that we write those Books, we write those stories between memories, both fact and fiction. Just listen to the media that doesn't see us as anything but savages. And you fail to realize the lies between the lines or wires creating our screens that we think that we see. Social media is planting seeds in our intellect and you have yet to see that because of autocorrect. Do not correct my statements to try to fit the Euro-Caucasian standard, trying to capitalize Caucasian and effort to suppress the thoughts of the Panthers. Communication is just a text away instead of a phone call. We don't even see the beauty in nature anymore. Watching butterflies on YouTube, trapped behind computers. I went to Wesley College's campus to hear their students' opinions on the betrayal of African Americans in TV and film. I think that the black youth is portrayed in a bad way. I feel as if people feel like 
there's always a sort of crime or just some kind of negative energy when it comes to them. Uh, what I don't see now is that they don't broadcast how intelligent we and educated. So they only want us to see gangster and violence, you know, trap people. And that's not the case. You know, we all go to school. We all are trying to uh, receive our degree. So they don't really show that in the commission. What do individuals hope to see for the future portrayals of African Americans in film and television? Black people depicted in the media could be in a much more positive light. I believe that we only get shown a certain side of who we are, um, unfortunately, and far too often people are telling stories that are not our own. And I think it's always damaging whenever we cannot tell our own stories, then apparently somebody's going to always do it for us. And I believe that type of light and that type of media can definitely use a positive spin, and hopefully that's something that improves uh, with accurate representation and accurate truth-telling stories. One thing that certainly needs to change is that uh, black actors, producers, and people who are able to advance themselves where they're in the decision-making processes of films, or blacks who are able to provide capital into projects and fund projects, uh, there needs to be a greater degree of control. In the future, we hope to stop seeing stereotypical, degrading, and harmful portrayals of African Americans and have more positive depictions of black people in television and film.